0754, Mitchell versus the State of New York. The charges are as follows. Evading arrest, reckless endangerment, burglary in the first degree, and accomplice to murder in the first degree. You may now take the stand. My name is Malika Mitchell and I'm 16 years old. I guess from this book's appearance, you can see that I'm not your average teenage girl. I've done more than you could imagine. Let's see. At 14, I was jumped into the neighborhood gang that my homie, Renisha, had joined a year before, and I hold my flag close to me. About a month after I joined, I got pregnant by my, at the time, 19-year-old boyfriend, Tyreek, who paid for my abortion before I reached a month, and then left me for another girl on our block. When it became my time to collect money for our crew, I used knives to hold up corner stores and gas stations with Renisha. We never got caught and we always had fun. We were amazingly invincible. At age 15, I had already been suspended six times. The next time I got in trouble, it was my last strike before I would be put into juvie for good. June 19, 2006, started out as just another day looking for some fun, chilling out in the house with Renisha. When she came up with an idea to rob a house in the rich neighborhood on the other side of town. I thought this may be risky, but like always, Renisha persuaded me to go with her. And I mean, she was my best friend. We called Renisha's new boo, Brandon, for a ride, and we headed over to the rich neighborhood. When we went to get out the car, Brandon handed two guns to Renisha, and then she handed one of them to me. I never held a gun, and I never intended on shooting anyone. Renisha must have saw the fear in my eyes because she quickly said, It's okay. They're not loaded. It's just to enforce the we mean business. I trusted Renisha's judgment, so I just nodded. We bust in the house where a lady was home alone. Renisha yelled for her to lay down on the ground and told me to shoot her if she moved. When she came back in the room, she told me that we hit jackpot. I grabbed a few things I liked, and when we went to leave, the lady hopped up and reached for a phone, and Renisha shot her in the back of the head. I froze. Renisha grabbed my arm and we ran back to the car. We were all clear. Brandon sped off as we made our way back across town. A few minutes later, a police car pulled around behind us and cut their lights on. We knew we couldn't pull over with the guns and all the cash in the car. We started driving fast and the police officer was chasing behind us, yelling to pull over. Brandon yelled for us to lay down on the ground as he fired shots over our heads. The police officer began firing back and hit Brandon in the neck. The car spun out of control. Renisha reached from the passenger seat and grabbed the wheel. We sped off as more police began chasing us. Renisha told me to take a gun and fire back. Frightened, I did what she said. The police report said that's when I wounded an officer who ended up losing control of his car and running off of the road. He died two hours later in the hospital. I suggest you don't be so quick to judge this book by its cover. So I'll open the book. See, things for me haven't been all rainbows and butterflies. By the time I was nine, I had already witnessed my first murder. This person being my mom after her drunken boyfriend, Sean, beat her brains out for not having his dinner ready one time. I remember that day like it was yesterday. Mm. June 19, 1998. This was also the day I had my innocence savagely taken from me by Sean as my older sister Sonia screamed helplessly outside my bedroom door. That night, me and my sister ran away. Since then, life for me has been survival of the fittest, living from shelter to shelter. When I went to school, my sister worked as a waitress by day and sold her body at night to get money for us. I started finding myself alone and afraid at night sleeping at the shelter. But when I reached 11 years old, I stopped being so scared to be alone. I had finally become used to our way of life. It was the only way I knew. I remember one night, my sister saying she was off to do her usual job, and she'd be back in about two hours. It rained that night, and the hours grew late as I waited by the window for my sister to return, but she never did. 
Three days later, the police found her in an alleyway, laid out on the ground, cut from ear to ear. They said a, a man had probably tricked her into thinking he was the last customer of the night, but instead, he robbed and killed her. I couldn't grasp the thought of the only person who loved me being taken from me. When the police found out my age and me and my sister's history of living at the shelter, I was put into a foster home on Johnson Avenue. This is where I met Renisha, my homie. See, see, Renisha had always been a hard chick, and people were always telling me that she's not the best model for me to follow, but she understood me. She was 15 when we met, and she had been through a lot of what I had. She had been in juvie, been homeless, and even been pimped out by her own mom so she could continue paying for her crack addiction. Renisha was brought to Johnson's foster home after her mom overdosed one night. Renisha was the only one who took me under her wing. She always made sure I had fresh clothes for school, even though I had to steal them. She introduced me to her friends and made me part of their gang, so I didn't have to worry about nobody messing with me. Beside my sister, she was the only one to tell me she loves me. She was like my hero. But that day, her cape was nowhere to be found. Surrounded by cop cars, me and Renisha sat in the car thinking our next move. We had never been caught. We were amazingly invincible. The cops stood outside their cars, pointing their guns, telling us to surrender. Renisha had always sworn that if another came down to it, she'd die before she'd be put away. She whispered, I love you, Malika, then grabbed a few bags of money and a gun and jumped out the car to run. About 30 shots fired all at once. I saw Renisha fall to the ground and a puddle of blood formed beneath her. I froze where I sat. I heard faint sounds of sirens and screams of cops yelling to me to surrender. I put my hands up as I glanced over at Brandon's lifeless body sitting in the driver's seat. The police cuffed me and walked me to a police car. I began crying frantically as I passed Renisha's body sprawled out in the street. The way I lost my heart in just those few moments, I felt the pain build up inside me as I formed a secret hate of myself. A prideful mask formed over my face. I could have seen this another way. I, I could have learned from my mistakes and helped Renisha to find a better way to survive. I could have been her shoulder to lean on. We, we didn't have to end up this way. And Renisha would still be here if I had helped to lead her. But all my dreams turned to silent tears that faded away and drifted to rage. And the thought of her being gone, just in those few moments, cut my world. This is who I am. Not who you thought I was. I didn't choose this life. I don't belong here. See, I had to fend for myself and fight for my respect. I had to commit crimes to survive. I didn't wake up with these behaviors. This is just a key to my madness. Just like any girl. I just want to be loved. To be told I'm pretty. To be safe and secure. But instead, I was forced into becoming this angry 16-year-old who stands before you today. I never asked for this life and how I wish God would take it back and let me start over as someone else. See, you didn't know me. To you, my life was, was just another common path for black girls my age living in the hood. The things you see on the outside shape what you perceive me to be. But now you can see that a person's present actions are only a product of their past. You, you didn't read me before you formed your opinion. And you didn't take the time to dust me off and flip through my pages. You looked at 
my cover and, and put me back on the shelf. You didn't know my history, but you know me now. I'm not just another dim face in the distant crowd. I deserve to be seen. So what do you see when you look at me? What's up? Nothing. Just trying to get my thoughts down on this paper. You? I'm just coming to see if you were okay. You left dinner kind of early. Yeah. I just really didn't feel up to it. Besides, I didn't like the thing was serving me tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know. The cornbread had corn in it. <laughs> just because it's cornbread doesn't actually mean it has to have corn. What do you expect? You gotta take what you can get. The other shelter have better food. Yeah, and better room. So, so what's been up with you lately? Nothing. You been spending more time by yourself? No, I'm good. Okay. I heard you might be leaving soon. Where'd you hear that? I don't know. Around. Well, I'm not sure. I think our time at the shelter may be running out. I don't know. I try not to pay too much attention to it. I'm trying to ignore it until it goes away. Really? And how's that working out for you? <laughs> well, I'm still living here, aren't I? I'm just concerned, you know? This could be hard on anybody. What do you mean? I mean, being homeless? I'll still be with you wherever you go. It's just that I don't want to lose. Yes, I know. When I was little, me and my mom used to move around a lot. And I tried so hard to stay in touch with my friends. But it never worked out. I kind of always wonder why they didn't try harder. Why they didn't care enough about me to hold on to our friendship. Maybe they were too young. To keep track. Maybe. I just always wish I knew what could have been done for things to turn out differently. Maybe we were too young. Maybe it was just too much for us then. You've been there for me for so long. You understand me in ways that nobody else could. I've never loved anybody like I love you. You don't have to worry. I'll be there. Thank you. I just wish you weren't so sad. 
A few days ago, I found out my father died. I'm sorry. No, don't be. Are you going to the funeral? I don't know. I guess. It's just that his family's going to be there at the funeral. Well, I guess my family, too. I always wondered what they'd be like if they know about me. My mother told me once that I have sisters. I wonder what they're like. I don't know much about them. Maybe they can tell me what he was like as a father. You know, I, I can't even remember what he looks like. I can't even remember his face. I think that's what hurts the most. When I was little, my mom and I used to visit him. She'd take me to the store and we'd spend a day with him. I don't remember exactly what I did while I was there. I don't even remember visiting a lot. Maybe it just felt like a lot of times. Oh, I remember one time he took pictures of me, like real professional ones. But I could be remembering that wrong, too. And then it just stopped. I didn't see him anymore. I spoke to him on the phone once. And that was it. Well, you know what happened? No. I never brought myself to ask. I remember I spent one summer at my grandma's house, and she lived right down the road from his store. Anyway, me and my cousin, we rode our bikes down to where the store was, and when we got there, it wasn't there. In its place was a radio shack. After that, I hated all radio shacks and swore never to go to one. <laughs> but I later found out that his store hadn't been taken over by a radio shack. And so now I can go there. <laughs> I loved him so much when I was little. It was almost ridiculous. I remember for my seventh birthday, I had gotten two dollhouses, one for my mother and one from him. One was like this really cool Lego dollhouse that I loved, and I spent like a month decorating. And the other one was this plain dollhouse from Fisher Price or somewhere. That was okay, but it was nothing like my Lego dollhouse. I loved that dollhouse, even more because it was from him. When my cousin tore it apart, I got so angry and upset because I knew he had destroyed the only present my father had given me and probably would ever give me. But I later found out that the Lego dollhouse was from my mom and not from my dad. I felt so bad for assuming it was my father's present. I just wanted it to be because I loved it so much. I should have known it was from my mom. I just feel like a part of me is missing. And now he's gone. And I've been wondering how my mom and I ended up here. If things might have been different if he had stayed. If he had loved my mom and me enough to stay once I was born. If we had been a family. I always wondered if he ever tried to find me. If he actually cared. But I doubt it. If he wanted to find me, he could have found a way. My grandma has lived in the same place for as long as I can remember. He just didn't care. All I ever wanted was the chance to ask him why. Why he abandoned me. I love him so much. And I just want to know why he never loved me back. But now, now I'll never know. It just, it just hurts to know that the man who helped to bring me to life didn't even care. Didn't even care whether I was dead or alive. But why? Was I not good enough? I was his daughter. I just don't understand. And now he's gone. And now I never will. It's just, I just need to understand. And he's robbed me of that. He's left me with nothing. I hate him. No, you, you don't hate him. You still love him, but you hate what he's done to you. You hate that, that he's abandoned you, and now you're struggling to fill up that space he left behind. You hate the fact that you love him, but he'll never love you the same. You hate the fact that you hate the feeling, the feeling in your throat you get when you're honest with yourself about it. And those tears in your eyes when you realize you really do miss him. <laughs> but there's nothing to miss, and I hate that too. When he left me, he left me so incomplete. Well, what makes think, what makes you think knowing him would have made you complete? I guess I just always thought that his love would make me well, complete. What about your love? 
The love that you have for him as a little girl. It wasn't made made you real. Happy. Who's to say it wasn't it real? It was based on something that wasn't true. It may feel like it wasn't true to you now, but it was true to you at some point. Yeah, but I can't even remember him. And what I do remember, I'm not even sure if it was just a lie. Can't you remember the lies? The truths that you made up because you love him. But that's too hard! You love him. 